Okay, I'm just going to sit and talk to you just a second. I know that you've had several speakers, and uh, you're probably getting tired of listening to people tell you the truth. So I won't be long with you, but uh, I will tell you just this, that uh, you know you're the pulse. Now, everybody says it all the time, but I get it. You know, I just had the opportunity right next door here. There's, I don't know, 12 or 15 you know, kids from McDowell County, and they're from River, Riverview and Mountain View. And uh, I think about those kids, and I think about just what you deal with over and over and over. Now, I get it. You know, a lot of times, you know, you know whether it be some fancy politician that maybe lives in Charleston or wherever it may, that they may live, you know, and they may tell you they understand. Well, maybe they do and maybe they don't. But I get it. Those kids, really and true, I said to them, I said, you know, is it your ambition in life to get out of town and get out of this state and go somewhere? Or is it your ambition to try to find your opportunities and your passion here in West Virginia, if it were available to you, and stay close home. One of the kids said, it's my ambition to get gone. And all the rest of the kids said, they want opportunity and they want to stay right here. Now, listen, we all know how good West Virginia is. We know it and we get it. And we know that today, and there's no point in me just dwelling on this forever, I could sit here and brag all day long about how good West Virginia is doing, and it, it really is. Compared to where we were when I walked in this door, my God, a living, we're knocking it out of the park. But we still got a lot to do. And we still got a lot of people out there that are really hurting. And a lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities that we need to seize and take care of. I mean it when I say this, you are the pulse. You're the drivers. You're the people that are on the front lines. You're the people that can't just put your pencil down. You can't just shut down. You've got everything that happens, just about, happens through you. So I congratulate you. A lot of times it's a thankless job. A lot of times my job is a thankless job, you know, but at the same time, I'd say two things. I'd say you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. <laughs> and the other thing is God bless you for having the ability and the care to serve because at the end of the day, that's what turns the wheel. Now we got lots of stuff to do, you know, there's, there's times that uh, I've surely tried to step up to the plate and be right with you, whether it be this horrible, devastate, devastating flood stuff that we, you know, that we all suffered through beyond belief. Worst thing that I've ever been through in my life, the worst thing. Or it may be, you know, a terrible warehouse type fire in Parkersburg and nobody knew what to do. Everybody sat around on their hands and everybody was just all to pieces. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The county doesn't have enough money to do this or that and everything else. And the state's lockjawed because this, this is a private business and they should have insurance and the insurance pop people are not coming through and the fire continues and the smoke continues and our people continue to suffer. Somebody had to make a decision and I did. I made the decision that quick. And so at the end of the day, you know, we're still hacking up with the insurance company and trying to get our money back, but somebody had to make a decision on what to do. Well, you see, I'm not the guy that's not going to make decisions. I'm not a politician. You know, I've said it a million times over. At the end of the day, in lots and lots of ways, I don't really care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or independent. I, all I care about is that you're West Virginians and you want goodness for our state. 
I've said over and over, I really don't want anything. I really don't want anything for me. But I really do want something. And that is this. I want what's going on right now in West Virginia, and I want it to just keep getting better and better and better. I want goodness for our people. So I really do want something. I really don't want anything for me, but I want goodness for our people. So at the end of the day, I won't talk here forever. I'll just congratulate you on the great work that you do. You know, I've got tax people and revenue people that are here that can tell you the, all the goodness that's going on. But all the goodness that's going on still, if there's upteen upteen roads that are getting fixed and your road's not one of the roads that's getting fixed, it's not enough goodness that's going on. So, one of the things that we're going to change, and we're going to change right now, it's difficult to change in some ways, but we've put a lot of emphasis on the fact that Roads to Prosperity thing has brought all kinds of jobs, and gosh knows we've done hundreds and hundreds of projects. We can do more. And we've got to put more emphasis on our secondary roads than our giant projects, too. You know, so at the end of the day, our giant projects preserve the fact that people can come to West Virginia, but we got to, first of all, conquer how you get to the convenience store, too. And so we're on it. We're on it. I didn't mean to talk this long in any way, shape, form, or fashion, but I've got to tell you this, too, and then I'll quit. I came up with this thing called Jim's Dream. And at the end of the day, what I could see is, whether it be the community colleges, the four-year colleges, the tech schools, the boat ag places, you know, the treatment facilities, all the different aspects, everybody, all the time is just going around and around and around and around and around, and we're losing the battle. You know, we've got drugs, threatening to cannibalize us at all times. I can't recruit all kinds of new business because we don't have a qualified workforce. The, the pieces to the puzzle are right there in front of us. Now y'all can say a lot of things, but I'll, I'll bet you all the money in Texas just this. That if you'll give me the pieces of the puzzle, you'll not find anybody better that can put the pieces together. And I don't say that egotistically, I just say that as fact. I know how to do it. And I'll get the pieces put together. Now this Jim's dream thing may not be exactly perfect today and we may have to tweak and tweak and tweak, but if the legislature will give me the opportunity to put it into motion, we'll make a difference. We won't be coming back here over and over and over saying we're still just dead last, dead last, dead last in the, in, in the drug epidemic and we're trying every way in the world to do something about it. And in addition to that, in this Jim's dream thing, whether you have no drug issues whatsoever or drug issues, you can come and participate just as well. You see, we got all kinds of young people in this state right now that, and I've seen it. You know, I've been, I've been out on one of our surface mine jobs with my son Jay and see a kid drive up, and he's a kid because he's a lot younger than me, but whether it be 20 or 22 years old, his wife in the car and two babies and a, just a kind of a beat up old car and everything, had to drive through the mud and everything under the sun to get out there on that job. And then he says, that, you know, the foreman goes up to him and says, he says, I'm here because I understand y'all got some jobs that are available and I need a job. He said, I can pass a drug test and I'll work night and day, I'll do anything and everything, I need a job. And the first thing the foreman says is, do you have any experience? And he says, well, not really, but I'll work really, really hard. And the foreman has to say to him, you know, well, let us try to get back to you and find something somewhere maybe you can do, but we can't afford, there's no way that you can put the guy out there on a D11 bulldozer if he doesn't have any idea how to run it because he'll kill himself or somebody. So he's caught, he's caught in this, in this 
spin cycle, and what's he going to do? What's he going to do? He can't afford to step away from government payments and government insurance or whatever it may be and take a job making $7 and something an hour. He can't afford to get out of the spin cycle. What's he going to do? And then, if you don't watch out, drugs are always there. The temptation's always there. Here's a kid that just wants a chance. And we in West Virginia desperately need a trained workforce. So we need to train him. We need to give him the opportunity to become trained. And that's what we're going to do. And, and so Jim's dream's got a lot of aspects to it and everything, and it can be good. I would tell you all this, you know, you're welcome. You're welcome in our tunnel within our people and projects you have. We'll listen and we'll try to help in every way we can every day. But the biggest thing I can do is congratulate you for the great work you do. And Dave and Mark, I don't know, are y'all here for anything to do with me or, or, <laughs> or y'all here just to, to throw eggs at me, you know? <laughs> but, but let me tell you the last thing. You know, and, and this, I mean, I'll tell this later on today too, but this I heard this morning. This to me is what's wrong in a lot of ways. Now you got to think through this and everything to get what's kind of wrong. But I was watching TV this morning about five o'clock and, and they came on and they said, there's been a new study that's just completed. There's been a new study that people have done and they've, and they've just completed a study and they want to report that kids' allowances have increased by 6.2%. And I thought, what? I mean, and, and they were reporting it like it was news. And they said, this year kids' allowances have gone to I don't know if they said $406 or $40.60. But they then went on to say that kids that are helping with the laundry have gone up 8.9% to $2.22 a month. And then, <laughs> then, of all things, they said something like, you know, Kids that go out and get to paper every day, they have increased from 56 point something cents to 59.2 cents. So I would just tell you this, if you've got a kid and you're paying that kid in excess of 59.2 cents, he's ripping you off. <laughs> so, so if you just imagine, really, really, is that what government does? And if that's what government does, then that's not what government's going to do if I'm your governor. So anyway, nevertheless, we're trying every way we can to help you in any way. You're welcome any day, any time. And, uh, and so just know we're there for you. I'm going to leave you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.